and the exec is remapping the memory to the new program. So this happens usually in milliseconds. So though when you go docker exec, last week we did, right? So then you go inside, when you say ls, you will see the file system that you feel like, okay, I have a separate different universe. No, you don't have it. You will see all these modifications back. If you give docker remove, uh, that time this file get deleted. Or oh, every time you run, you get a fresh writable layer. Now we learn the containers are nothing but is a process on running on top of the host operating system. Okay, by with the shared kernel. There are when you have uh, host operating system, there are two pillars that really hold in this concept. Right? There are two pillars really hold in this container concept. One is called namespace, other one is called C group, namespace and C group. I explain docker use clone but not the fork. Why? It can specify I need copy of these, these, these namespaces in order to get this to run. Keep in mind, namespace are not a Docker concept or a container concept. When the Linux comes up, the engineer wanted to have a process isolation mechanism. The run processors isolated within the operating system. So one is crashed, doesn't crash the other one. In the microservices, we did certain things. Likewise, engineers wanted to have a, some sort of a mechanism where if one is crashed, it doesn't propagate to the other one, the isolated processing. So this namespace, the C group concept is coming from that. Docker just inherited it. And some has a misunderstanding. Docker came up with this namespace concept. No, it is not. Namespace is a limited isolated view of the kernel processors to this one. It's like a, we do the access control access. You can see some data, you can see some data, you can see some data. Authentication and authorization is a similar concept. Namespace is the way you give view of the kernel processes to the this process you created. You cannot see everything. You only can see your isolated view given to you. That is why when the PID 533 on the host become a PID1 because in the my world, I have only one processor. Got it? That's a namespace in a simple. C group mean it is controlling how much you can access. For example, we have a 100% CPU. You only can get 1%. You can get 5%. You can get 10%. C group control how much you can access. It's exactly like OT and OZ. This define what you see and what you get a copy kind of a thing. Not the copy, forget about the copy part. This define what you see, what you can see. Right? It get a view, or your own view for those processors. This tells how much you can use on the resources you have. Right? It get the CPU network and everything. UTS, this is because you can create your own host name onto your Docker. And there is other user namespace. So that because of that, you can have a different users and you can see the uh, set the different privileges to the users. Okay, MNT for the mounts, NS for the net, N I think NS, not NS, I think it's a net. Right? So PID, net, MNT, UTS, and uh, user. There are two or three more namespaces. Now, example for this PID, right? So if you get the your container, PID might be one for the host. PID might be five three double four, right? For the container, PID might be two. 
for the host maybe five three double five or something like that. Okay, so now you only see your your PIDs. Now let's say two containers run, right? So now this is container one. This is container two, right? This has a PID one and two and three, right? So this may be six five double two, five six double seven, something like that, right? So now this container is two PIDs. This is two PIDs. This is all four PIDs. So if you get the C groups, you have CPU, memory, I/O. PID, so you can define how many process this can create also. Now we create process inside the container, right? So now let's see something like this, right? So you have a container one. So you have PID one, two, three. Okay. So now this has a five, three. Let's say fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five. Something like this. Right, the container two. Right, so it create PID one two three. So this may be sixty, seventy, eighty two, something like this. Right, now here you get the Java program. Right, so Java program come to the container three. This is a very misunderstanding. The Java process create ten different threads. Java process create ten different thread. Keep in mind, Java threads are not processors to the kernel, right? Those are process threads. So now there is a PID one. It create ten threads, but still for the host, maybe one PID. But under the PID, you can in a Linux, you can go inside and see what are the tasks running by PID. You can say proc, and then you can go the task. So if you see that, you will see ten different tasks, but it doesn't see ten different processors for the kernel perspective. Okay, for the kernel, it doesn't see ten different processors. It see ten different tasks. Got it? The difference between threads and then creating more processes, right? So understand this is because this is the isolation, names names base level isolation. C group control the resources. So now let's say you, she was given a certain amount of memory. If you are hitting that, then it goes out of memory and restart. If he, she is given a certain amount of CPU, if it hit the CPU, it go for CPU throttling. Right. That is why in a Kubernetes type of containers, the Kubernetes type of an environment, you see out of memory kill, OOM kill, because in a C group you have defined certain level of memory resources you can go maximum. You reached it. Right. In the CPU can throttle, memory cannot throttle, so you go to the OOM. Now when it come to the namespaces, we learn when you give the clone command, you can get the copy of namespaces. Right. When you give the clone, you get the copy of the namespaces. You can have shared namespaces. You can have a shared namespaces. What it mean? That Docker, when the that Docker run, it won't create its own namespace. Instead of that, it will join to the existing namespace. Right? Remember, you created network equal host, network equal my network, or so and so. That is what happened. Let's say you only create three. The third one is you are not you are setting don't copy, and you specifying some namespaces already existing. It's go and join to that one, right? So namespace lifecycle is when the last process died, namespace died. So if you have a normal situation, what happens is a Docker create namespaces for you when you run it. Create mean copy, get a copy of the namespaces. But if you say don't create one, join for the existing one, it will join. So now the the first Docker gone, the second Docker is still remaining, the namespace still remaining. When the second one gone, the namespace gone. That is the 
life cycle of a namespace. But there can be a namespace, for example, you can get a Docker network, something like that. Uh, there are three or like two or three more sessions we need to do to cover the entire the depth we are going to try to go, right? And um, so then in the next session, you will learn certain things what we learned today is go a little deeper than this, right? And collecting few more new, right? To understand exactly do how Docker works. In summary, Docker is not a separate thing. It is a process to the operating system. If you see in the operating perspective view, it doesn't see I'm running a container. It see I'm running other processor, right? I, I, I'm running other process. That is what it is. It doesn't see it. It's just a container, right? So uh, we'll we'll go in the next session. Little go deeper into this. Uh, where other some other aspect we need to uh, talk about this one. And as I said, I'll share the assignment the right away, right? So uh, work with your mentor and try to figure it out. But the area is not clear, right? That you need to finish it by Monday, Monday morning, not the Monday end of the day, the Monday morning, okay? So I told. Uh, so they will not work for you, but you can get the all the clarification. And today you cover up whatever the, your gaps, uh, understanding, missing everything, right? Go through what you learn again. If you don't remember something, just work with them and see how it works and clarify and start work on the assignment. The assignment is to prove things, right? For example, there is a question as I remember, the proof that every process running, uh, the, the Docker is shared in the kernel. Okay, so why I said don't work with the cross mentors, right? Though, like for example, uh, the his favorite may be Amhar or uh, Lasini because of the badge fit, but uh, the, you shouldn't do it. But because the way uh, Lasini thinks to prove it and way the uh, he's think Ashan thinking to prove it may be different, right? I shouldn't see exactly similar nine assignments, right? They figure out in their own way to how to how to do this part, right? So work with them. So you will have separate teams. So your mentor and you in a separate team, but in perspective, Dushan has a three member team and <laughs> with others, sorry, two member teams. Okay, then good luck. I need the assignment by Monday.